video you can tell, oh, you didn't know I was adding the maraca sounds to the theme too, didn't you? If you've seen the previous video, you saw me playing guitar, and now you see me adding the maracas. What can't I do? What can't I do? The big question will come today, if I can squeeze in all these CDs I have to talk about in a short period of time, um, without making this video a half hour long. So today we're doing another rewind visit to a record store that I stopped at in I think June 2018, Grey Whale in the Salt Lake City area. I think I went to the store in Ogden. I think they have two locations. Really cool store, good prices, found a lot of stuff there. Um, and let's just dive in. 2005, we get Sons and Daughters and the Repulsion Box. This is a band that I discovered on the often mentioned New York Noise. They had a song called Guilt Complex that I really liked that I saw the video on that show for. Uh, rock band, kind of alt rock. I think they maybe are from Scotland. Uh, and they no longer exist. They split up in 2012. Um, but uh, really good. I saw this there and I picked it up. I didn't really know anything about this record. I think I had their other album. I think the one with Gil Complex comes after this, actually. I had that album and I liked it. And um, so I decided to give it a chance and it's uh, really good. I really like this, uh, this album. Uh, some of the tracks on here that I like. Medicine, Red Receiver, Taste the Last Girl, and Rama Lama. <laughs> But uh, really good. You should check these guys out if you like just kind of a female singer, kind of really kind of driving rock beat. Definitely worth giving a try. 2006, we got the Future Heads and News and Tributes. Uh, again, same thing. Uh, I discovered them through New York Noise. They played a live version of the song Skip to the End, which is on this album. And I really like that. I had one other... Uh, CD by Future Heads. I think their first record. I think this is their second album. And going along with the title, the booklet, it's kind of like a newspaper almost, which is kind of neat. These guys split up in 2013 and then reunited in 2019. Um, but uh, same thing, like kind of alternative indie rock, you know, uh, you know, enjoyed this uh, record quite a bit. Some of the tracks on here that I like, besides Skip to the End. Yes, No, Worry About It Later, Favors for Favors, and We Cannot Lose. Uh, but good band, kind of, like I said, kind of indie rock, whatever, maybe post-punk, but uh, definitely worth checking them out. Now that they're back reunited, you could maybe go see them live. 2006, we get Tilly on the Wall and Bottoms and Barrels. And I discovered them through New York Noise as well with their song, Beat Control. Cool band. They, they're they sort of famous for not having a drummer. They have someone, percussionist, who kind of stomps on a piece of plywood, I guess. Um, they also broke up, I think, in 2013. They released a Best Of in 2020, I think, but only digitally and a cassette. No other formats, which is kind of a little bizarre. Um, I don't know how to describe them, kind of, I guess kind of indie, alternative rock, but they sort of have their kind of own vibe going on. I really like them. Some of the tracks on this album that I dig are Lost Girls, and The Freest Man. And this CD is enhanced and contains a making of the record video, which I have not watched, which I didn't realize. And after I record this, I think I'm gonna go watch it. But that's Tilly and the Wall. And speaking of, from 2012, we get Tilly and the Wall and their fourth and final studio record, Heavy Mood. I don't know why they split up. I don't think I ever really read anything about uh, what happened, but uh, I know the one sort of main singer, she went on to form another band, uh, which I think was a bit more dance oriented. You know, when I was trying to describe them, I think there's also like an, an element of like, kind of electronica maybe in some of their songs as well. I think they came from like Omaha. There was this kind of scene happening in Omaha uh, back in like, I guess the 2000s or so. Uh, uh, and they kind of came out of that. But uh, I really like this record. The first track that I heard off of this that I really liked was All Kinds of Guns. Uh, and some of the other songs on here that I dig are Love Riot, Echo My Love, and Defenders. Good track, too. Uh, really good band. I wish that Best Of was released on, like, CD or vinyl or something. That would be kind of cool. But 
Um, I, th I have a, I might have all their CDs. I might have all four of their studio albums, so maybe I don't need the best of, right? Won't be the point. 1992, we get Buffalo Tom and Let Me Come Over. Some Aboriginal dude on the front cover there. Um, whoop. Receipt time. I always do this. I stick the receipts in here. So, Grey Whale, I visited on July 30th, 2018. I think I said June in the opening, but it was July 30th, 2018 at 1.16 p.m. Do you know where you were? Um, price is not bad, like I said. Like, price is all used. I bought all these used. I think the most I paid for one was eight bucks, which is a little high, but the majority of these I got for $2.50, which is pretty damn good. Um, so anyways, back to Buffalo Tom. Uh, alt rock, one, you know, right down the lane of alt rock, college rock, really good. I mean, they were pretty popular. The, the first tune I heard from this album was Tail Light Fade, which, you know, I always thought was, like, I remember hearing that song back in the day, and I always thought that was, like, a really popular song, but I don't really think it charted or anything like that, but uh, good band, you know, uh, some of the other tracks on here that I like are Staples, and Crutch was pretty good too, but uh, you know, really decent, you know, 90s alternative rock, if you're looking for that, look no further. 2014, we get Blonde Fire and Young Heart, and they started out as like a brother-sister group, um, and they were called Astaire, and I guess the Fred Astaire estate kind of sent them sort of a cease and desist letter, so they changed their name, and I guess I think I read it was like in the middle of a tour, they changed their name to uh, Blondfire, and then the brother decided to bail, and so now Blondfire is essentially just the, the singer's uh, kind of solo career in a sense. Pretty good, you know, kind of electronica. There's a, there's a bit of sort of more dance-oriented stuff on here that... I'm not really crazy about, but I like the more kind of indie pop stuff on here. The first track that I ever heard from them back in the day was uh, Where the Kids Are, and that kind of tipped me off to this band. might be pretty good. So when I saw it there and it was cheap, I just decided to give it a shot. Uh, some of the other tracks in here that I liked are the title track, Young Heart, Wild and Wasted, and Deer in Your Headlights is pretty good too, but... Uh, that's Blonde Fire, not a bad uh, band. I don't know. I don't know really anything else by them other than this album. I'd have to like kind of check it out, see if their other stuff is more dance stuff or if they kind of lean more into like the indie pop stuff. Be curious to see. Two thousand one, we get the Go Go's, who just got inducted, or they will be inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, which is good for them. Uh, I I, I kind of like the Go Go's back when they uh, came out in the eighties. Um, but I wasn't, I didn't own any of their records or anything like that, but there are a couple of the songs I liked. And then I kind of got into them much later. I mean, maybe in the late nineties or something, I started really kind of appreciating them more as a really, really good tight band. Um, and I remember when this came out, uh, the song Unforgiven, I really liked, uh, but never thought to pick up the, uh, the album. Uh, so when I saw it there, Grey Well, I just decided to grab it and, uh, it's pretty good. I mean, you know. They were new wave, kind of pop, you know, even though they sort of started out as a punk band, uh, by the time they kind of signed with a label and were having hit records, they were kind of more like a pop band or whatever, new wave. Um, but, you know, a lot of this is pretty much in line with, you know, what you would expect from the Go-Go's. Billy Joe from Green Day and Susanna Hoffs from the Bangles make some uh, writing contributions to this album. Uh, but this was the last album. They haven't, you know, they reunited, did some tours and stuff like that, and they still do tours and whatever, but they recorded this uh, as a, like a reunion album, and that was that. They've never done any other stuff, surprisingly. But, um, you know, pretty good record uh, besides Unforgiven, the other stuff on here that I kind of liked. La La Land and Stuck in My Car was pretty good too. So that's God Bless the Go-Go's. I'm not even sure if I said that at the beginning. 1993, we get the eighth album by Midnight Oil, Earth and Sun and Moon. I liked Midnight Oil. I remember when they came around in the 80s when they appeared here in the United States. Um, I guess really, I, I remember them a little bit before 
beds are burning, which was really the thing that kind of broke them in the United States. But I remember seeing them on like a music video show before that, something else. I don't remember what song it was. Um, but, uh, you know, they had a decent amount of success here in the United States, I guess in the late 80s, mid to late 80s. Saw them live maybe 2017 or so. Um, really good show, great show. I don't think they had played the United States in a while. So uh, I was glad to get to see them. Ever since I saw them live, I've been kind of picking up uh, more of their records when I see them. Uh, and that's how I ended up with this one. Um, but it's good. I like it. Some of the tracks on here that I really like are True Ganini, which I think was the first single, Feeding Frenzy, and My Country. You know, really good band, like a lot of kind of political elements uh, for their homeland, Australia, in some of their songs. Uh, but if you get a chance to see them live, I highly recommend it. 2000, we get Sar and Sar, the title album, produced by Rob Cavallo, who was, did uh, Green Day and The Muffs and a bunch of other people. Uh, and I guess this band, there was a lot of kind of hype around this band. A lot of people expected great things from them or lots of sales, and I don't think it really happened. Uh, but good band, kind of pop punk. Uh, first thing I remember hearing from them, I don't remember when I heard it, but uh, I heard the song, Kathy Fong is the Bomb. And I heard it like on a local college radio station and they didn't say who it was. And I didn't have like Shazam at the time or anything. I just kind of remembered some of the lyrics and I was trying to like, you know, Google and try to find them. And I just remember it took me forever to find out who this band was. Um, and, uh, but when I finally did, I had that one song, you know, digitally. And then when I saw this at Grey Whale, I decided to give it a try and check out the album. And it's good, you know, if you like pop punk, pretty standard 2000s pop punk, that's what this is. If you like it, you probably dig this. Uh, some of the tracks on here besides Kathy Fong I like are Calling All Destroyers and I Don't Wanna Break Up. But that's Sar on Hollywood Records. 2007, we get Spoon and Ga 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 Ga. I think I, I, think I got them all. <laughs> but uh, good band, kind of a post-punk, alt-rock, you know. I'm sure you guys have heard of them. They were pretty popular. This album did really well. Don't Make Me a Target, I guess, was the big introduction. This record is a hit. See, it says it right there in the booklet. <laughs> but that was, I think, the big introduction for me for this band. That song, it was really popular, played on the radio a lot and stuff. Uh, but really good band. Um, I'd been looking for this CD for a little while. Always seemed to find like used copies of it, but they always wanted a lot. It was almost like paying like new prices for it. So, you know, luckily I saw it there at Grey Whale for a really good price and finally got my hands on it. Uh, besides Don't Make Me a Target, the other songs on here that I like are You Got Your Cherry Bomb and The Underdog. The Underdog is really good. It might be my favorite song by them, but uh, on Merge Records. Uh, good old merge records. So uh, that's Spoon and Ga 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 Ga. I don't know. <laughs> 2005, we get the Dead 60s and their debut, the Dead 60s. Uh, a friend of mine uh, that I worked with at Broadway Video gave me a copy of this back in the day, like a burned copy. And it was pretty good. It, it, they remind me a lot of The Clash. I don't even know if they claim The Clash or an influence, but if they don't, I feel like they're lying because they sound a lot like The Clash. Um, but good band, you know, kind of that, you know, rock, ska elements, reggae elements to it. First track on here that I remember hearing was Riot Radio, which is still my favorite song on this album. Some of the other ones I kind of like are Red Light, Just Another Love Song, and You're Not the Law. You are not the law. Don't forget that, kids. Uh, but uh, good record, and like most of the bands on this episode, apparently, they broke up in 2008. So from 2008, we get Louis XIV and Slick Dogs and Ponies. Um, I knew, I always liked uh, when they made the CDs like vinyl. I mean, I really always thought that looked cool. This one looks particularly really well. Atlantic Records, they did a really good job on that one. I like those. Um, but uh, I knew these guys before that. I had a, a previous, like, an EP or something by them that I really liked. Um, I didn't know this album at all. It's pretty good. I, I mean, I read that it, it got a lot of disappointment from this uh, with sales and critics and stuff like that. But I think it's pretty good. They kind of got this, you know, kind of like alt rock or whatever. The lead singer, it's funny, like, these guys don't sound like ACDC at all. 
but sometimes the singer reminds me of Bon Scott, like just the way he sings, like the cadence of his voice, I guess. Uh, but he just sort of has that kind of same, like I think of like big, that song, Big Balls by ACDC, that reminds me of like sometimes how this guy sings. But a uh, good record, you know, uh, some of the tracks on here I like are Misguided Sheep, Guilt by Association, and Tina. That is Louis the Fourteenth, And I guess these guys broke up again, another band that broke up, but I think they reunited uh, maybe just recently in like 2019. So they did break up, but they're back together now. So that is it for Gray Whale. Uh, really good shop if you're out there in Salt Lake. Like I said, they have a really good selection. They have at least two stores, I think. Um, good prices, like I mentioned, and, uh, you know, really cool staff. And, um, you know, just can't recommend it highly enough if you're in that Salt Lake City area to stop in and check out uh, Gray Whale. I think you'd really dig it. So. Again, thanks for watching. Please, by all means, let me know what you think of these records, any tracks that uh, you like from them, and I appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>